morning. Happy Father's Day to the fathers. Maybe we can get all the fathers to stand up. Maybe if you're a father, you can stand up. Good to pray for the your dads. All right, let's pray. Let's pray for all the dads. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for our fathers, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for their heart, Lord, and those that are so grandfathers, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for those, Lord, and even those that are Holy Fathers in the life of the church, Father. But Lord, we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon them, Lord. Uh, Lord, no, there's no, we're not perfect, Lord, but Lord, you are the perfect Father. We pray, Lord, for your blessing upon each one of them. Father, Lord, for the families, Lord, and help each and every one of us to be a better father, better, better grandfather or better father. And Lord, that we can sow into that next generation. But Lord, bless these wonderful men who, Lord, as they stand, Lord, as the leaders in the home, Lord. And uh, Father, just bless them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, man. Bless you. And uh, it's a happy birthday again to John 90. It's an amazing milestone. So praise God for that. And uh, it's wonderful. He's still not the oldest in the church. Uh, you're still pretty young, actually. We've got our dear sister, Frieda, who's a few years ahead of you. So uh, in the Diggers Rest campus. But uh, And I just want to say, too, before we open the word, just to just wonderful how the youth blessed us last week. Amen. Um, I was speaking at uh, Kingston last week, which is a church that I originally came out of 27 years ago. And uh, that was a blessing. But I did get to watch um, the kids and uh, our young people. Just wonderful the way that they ministered to us. And uh, it's exciting just to see that generation rising up. Amen. Amen. We've got a young adult service coming up in October and then there's the children's service. The kids run the service in December, so we're looking forward to that. But it's great to see those kids rising up. It's so exciting to see. Well, Lord, just bless this word. And Father, I pray that you speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, I want to talk about the Father's love today. I want to maybe major on a facet of the Father's love that we perhaps we don't really talk uh, about so much, but I want to speak certainly how God is a loving Father, but really an aspect of His love uh, that maybe you don't hear a lot about, and maybe you don't necessarily want to hear about this aspect of the Father's love, but it is certainly is really important, and we want to talk about that. But certainly God is a loving Father. We've sung that beautiful, I love that, don't you love that, that song, You're a Good, Good Father? You can't just reminds us of the goodness of God as we sing that. You're a good, good father. And uh, none of us have had a perfect father. Uh, there's never been a perfect father other than our Lord, our Father in heaven. He's the perfect father. And uh, whatever you experience with your own father, some of you may have had a wonderful upbringing with your father. Some of you may have had a traumatic upbringing with your father. And I pray that on a day like today, for those that this is a painful day or maybe your father's passed away, that, that you see beyond the humanity of fathers and their frailty, but let's look to our heavenly father who is a perfect father in heaven. Amen. And only a perfect father can love perfectly and he loves perfectly to each and every one of us. 1 John 3, 1 says this, See what great love, I love this verse, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. I've used this verse many times, the love that He's lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that's what we are. What a wonderful thing that He's just poured His love upon us. I love that word lavished. He didn't just drip feed His little love, just a little bit of love, just a little bit of love. He just poured all of it on us, all of His love. Not just a little bit of a love, just, just a little enough, a little bit to get you by. God's poured all His love upon us. And that amazes me to think that the, the Creator of heaven and earth would love me so much that He would pour all His love upon me. And that's what He's done. He's poured all His love on us. And again, He's demonstrated that on the cross, which we beautifully just celebrated. And so God is that loving Father and He's also the God that gives us good things because He's a good, good Father, amen? James 1.17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. And every father, natural fathers, they'll have a good day and they'll have a bad day. If you're a father, you've ever had a bad day? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a few honest ones and some are having a bad one today because they're not being honest. And we've all had a, had a, a bad day as a father, and, but God doesn't have bad days. He's a good, good father and uh, good, perfect gifts that he gives us. What a wonderful father. He's a generous father. And certainly as a father, uh, being a father with my children growing up, uh, I, I would want to give them anything and everything. 
but it's not everything and everything is always good for them either. They can't really have ice cream for breakfast. It's not a good thing. Or having chocolate and ice cream for breakfast is not necessarily a really good thing. And But I'd love to give them whatever made them happy, but not always, always the best thing. It's always what you have to be wise in that. And God certainly is a wise father, but he gives you so many good things. And if you were to sit back and just think, all the good things that God has done in my life, even when you're going through a really tough time, you may be going through a tough time even now, but you just take a pause and reflect all the good things that God has done and you think, God, you are a good God. You're such a good God. Always remind yourself of the goodness of God when you're going through a hard time and uh, if you're struggling with something, just take a moment to pause and remember the goodness of God, what He's given us. There's also a very compassionate father. Psalm 103, 13 says, As a father has compassion in his children, uh, the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And so God's heart is towards us. Uh, we mess up. Have you ever messed up? Yeah, we've all messed up. And God is a compassionate God. You know, we have kids, my kids messed up. I have compassionate towards them. And uh, God is a compassionate God. He just sees our struggle. He sees our weakness. And in those moments, God just tenderly reaches down and He picks us up and He holds us and He just pours His love and grace upon us. And uh, as a father, a little child falls over, the father just would scoop up that little child and hold that child close and comfort them. And that's what the Lord does to us. We fall over every now and again and we hurt ourselves God just will reach us down. He picks us up and He comforts us. He's a compassionate, loving Father. And these things of the Father that we know well, and, and I trust that we're, we're aware of these things. He's love and He's a good God who gives us things. He's the compassionate God who just holds us close. But I want to talk about this other aspect of Him being a Father to us. And that's the Father that disciplines us. And I want to talk about that because it's not something we talk about a lot. And hands up if you like being disciplined. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> it's not a, a pleasant thing when you're disciplined, but God actually does discipline us. It's actually a part of God's work in our lives is the discipline of God. And it tells us in Deuteronomy 8.5, it says, Know this in your heart, so know this well, as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord God disciplines you. As a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. Now, we know that some fathers in their discipline aren't good fathers when it comes to discipline. Um, some fathers go to absolute extreme. I'm going to talk a little bit about for natural fathers, give you a few hints just before we finish in a little while. But not, not fathers have not necessarily always been perfect in the discipline. Some of them have been very brutal. And uh, maybe some of you suffered that. And I pray that if that's... You know, you've suffered that that God will continue to heal and take that away from your life. But God's not a father that is disproportionate. It might come up on the screen, but Jeremiah 10, 24 talks about when God disciplines, He dips, disciplines in measure, not excessively. And so God never disciplines out of His anger. He, he's never, right, I'm angry with you, I'm going to discipline you out of anger. God's always measured. And a good human father will never discipline out of anger. And I think as a father, I'm sure, yeah, look, I'm sure I did discipline at times out of when I was angry but it's always good to count to 10 you know before you discipline your kids take a breath so that you're not disciplining them out of anger it's out of love and compassion and correction for them in fact that word that we had from Matthew as he spoke Pastor Matthew spoke he spoke about that correction aspect of God but God does that perfectly as human fathers we don't we're not perfect never met a perfect father and there's uh, it's a there's the frailty and we're all a work in progress, but we have a perfect father who disciplines and he does in good measure, not disproportionately, and he does it very well. It says in Revelation 3.19, he says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Part of him disciplining us is that our heart might be turned to him and turn to his ways. But it's interesting when you think about the discipline, because quite often when we think about disciplining our children, we think about punishment, don't we? Right, you've done that, you're gone. You're in trouble now. I'm going to discipline you. It's to do with punishment. But when God disciplines us, 
God's discipline isn't about punishment. Now, ultimately, if we live our whole life and we don't surrender our life to Jesus Christ, we don't acknowledge what He did for us on the cross, if we're in rebellion to the things of God, ultimately there is eternal punishment because God's a holy God and He is a just God. But the discipline that we're subjected to is not for that we might be punished, even as believers, God does not punish us. He's not here to punish us, but he's actually to bring that correction. When the word discipline is where we get the word disciple from, and in the Latin, the word is disciplus, which means to be a pupil or to be a student, someone that is learning. And, and in the, in, in, in the uh, Greek word is pahidia, which means to be under tutelage, education or training. And so when God disciplines us, it's not to punish us. It's not, oh, is God punishing me? No, God is not punishing you. But if there's things that are happening in your life, it may be that you're coming under the discipline of God as a loving father, because it's an irresponsible father who does not correct their children. The children who wants to keep playing with the electric socket, loves picking up little pointy objects and poking them in the socket and seeing what will happen. And the father that just, just says, oh, oh, look, I've told them not to do that before. And just what kind of a father would they be? They've got the little thing and they want to poke it in the socket. No, no, a father would do something about that. They would do something to protect their children. And they teach their children to respond obediently. And the little child running out across the road. If parents need the, the power of command. They need to say, stop. And the child stops because their life may depend on that. And I still remember the story which um, when I was at... As I said, on Sunday, I preached from the church that I came from before I came here 27 years ago. And um, Pastor Ray Gilmore, I came up under him. He came to church really upset one day, really distressed. Um, him and his wife, Margaret, they were driving to church and there was a little child and the mother saying, stop, stop, stop. The little child didn't stop and ran straight in front of a bus. And just as they, and then they had to arrive at church and then he had to preach, just watching that happen. It was a terrible, terrible thing. But that, 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 that parent had no control over their child and some modern parenting is, I'll just negotiate with them. Was, that child died because of a negotiation. It was stop, the child needs to stop. And we need to know when God says stop, we need to stop. And sometimes God will allow things in our life to bring us to a place where we are obedient because our very life may depend on it. Uh, if we've got a loving father will do that. A loving father will bring correction. A loving father will bring, bring discipline. And remember it's as a student coming to learn and to grow, not to do with punishment. So if you're going through a hard time saying, oh, yes, God's, puni God's not punishing you. But if you're in a situation, maybe God is allowing that situation to continue because God wants you to learn something that you're in there. Sometimes we pray and say, Lord, just take this away from me straight away. Now God's able to do that. Have you ever asked yourself, why does God sometimes when we pray in a situation, in a circumstance, and straight away the answer comes, praise God. But sometimes when we pray, the answer doesn't come. Now, is God not powerful in that situation? Is God unable in that situation? Cannot God do that? Does He love this person more? Because when they prayed and they were in the situation, they prayed and then God did it for them straight away. But here I am, I'm in this situation and I'm praying and it's not changing for me. Have you ever wondered why? And then some people do wonder why. They think, oh, God's punishing me because I'm a bad person. No, God's not punishing you. He may be allowing that situation to continue because there's something that God wants to form or shape in your life. There's something that God wants to do within your heart, which one day will teach you so that you're not going to fall over the cliff because it's far better to endure some hardship or difficulty in this life than to endure it eternity because you don't know the Lord and never walked with the Lord. And so God will walk, allow some things in our life. It's not about punishment. It's about conforming us and shaping us to the person that he's made us to be and to live into the image of Christ. And so that's what it means. It's about coming as a student. You're being taught something. You're learning something in it. And that's, the, that's always the challenge when you're going through a tough time. I will pray for sure. Because, you know, and, and don't always think, you know, if the devil is having a crack, well, then fine. But sometimes God will allow some things 
to remain. So challenges that we face in our lives because He wants to work something in our life. There's an attitude that He wants to change. There's something within us that needs to be done. And God does that because He loves us. You're not punishing us. You're not a vindictive or punishing God. He's a holy and just God. And ultimately at the end of the day, when we face eternity, yes, if we have rejected and rebelled, there's that eternal punishment for that. But as we live our lives, God will never, God's not about punishing you. He's about drawing you closer to Him and conforming us to the image of Christ. And so it's really important to do that. It's not about punishment. It's about teaching. It's about learning. And if we, we truly are a follower of Jesus Christ, we say, Lord, I want to be everything that you've made me to be. And Lord, I want you to work in my life, Lord. And I know that there's some bad attitudes, Lord, and some bad behaviours and some things that need to be, Lord. And however you mould me and shape me, Lord, do your work within me. And he's doing that. Tells us, and I want us to read mainly look at Hebrews 12 today, because this is a really important scripture. I'm going to read from verse 7. I'm not going to read verse 5, but I'll mention verse 5, because it talks about Jesus. It says that he learned obedience through what he suffered. Jesus learned obedience. Think, hang on. Jesus learnt obedience. Does that mean that Jesus was disobedient and then he had to learn to be obedient? Because if he was disobedient, therefore then he sinned. And if he sinned, he wasn't sinless. And if he wasn't sinless, he couldn't die on the cross. So what on earth does that mean that he learned obedience? Well, exactly what it means is, is that if we, when the challenges were put to Jesus, he, was, he grew through those challenges, following and submitting himself to the Lord was nothing to do with about him being sinful and being disobedient. It's the process as you go through challenges, you become more and more aligned to what God's will is and his heart is. And as Jesus learned obedience, as it says in verse five of this passage, as he went through things, he went through everything without sinning, but as he faced every challenge, he grew in all that God the awareness of everything that God had for him and what he was to do. And so he, he grew in those things through the challenges and we are to grow also. So verse seven, it says this, endure hardship as discipline, endure it as discipline for God is treating you as his children. So it's not, God's not against us. He's not punishing us. He's a loving father. Always remember that he's a loving father. He's treating you as children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you're not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. Well, what they thought best might not always be even best because they're a flawed vessel. But God disciplines us for our good. Because what have we been singing about? He's a good, good father. In order that we might share in his holiness. So he's about our character being formed. He wants us to grow and more and more our image, to, uh, our, uh, our character to be formed and moulded to the image of Christ. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. I remember as a kid, did anyone ever get spanked as a child? Oh, look, I, 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 look, I tell you, I could be a naughty boy when I was growing up. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but, um, you know, look, I, I, did, I did have a mouth. Like, like I didn't, not swearing, I never swore, but I was, I always had to have the last word with everything. So my father would say, just be quiet and don't say anything. And I'd go, why? <laughs> I just, just couldn't shut up. Um, and, you know, and um, so my dad would give me a whack and, and, and I'd go, oh, that didn't hurt very much. <laughs> uh, what a fool I was. So, you know, I had to learn some things. And, um, you know, sometimes my dad got his belt out. And now I'm not telling, going, not, you know, Look, honestly, I'm not scarred or bruised by it. Some people are because if it was done in the wrong way. But I had to learn a few things. I had to learn a few things. And I had to learn respecting and honouring. Um, the Bible says about honouring your parents. And if you don't, you won't have a long life, but honour them. You'll have a long life. So John, you must be very honouring of your parents. Well done. Um, but we, I had to learn a few things. And I'm sure all of us have to learn a few things. Now, a human father would be doing that but that's punishment. But when God disciplines us, it's not punishment. He 
teaches us, it teaches us to learn something through that. So it's a little different. But no discipline is pleasant at the time. Nobody likes that. I don't even like being told off. And I, I, I don't know, I, I didn't like being told off. But I know our kids, when they were naughty, we just had to tell them, say, tell them off. And that was enough for them. They couldn't bear just being told off. They didn't like getting in trouble. And because they, because they're good kids. They were very good kids. Um, but they didn't like that. But I, none of us like getting told off, do we? And if you're going through discipline, it's not pleasant, it says here. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those that have been trained by it. And so you could be going through a situation where just there seems to be no peace. But when you look through that and if you've submitted yourself, because I'm going to talk about what's our attitude as we're going through discipline, because we can kick against it. I can say, ah, oh, it didn't hurt much, Dad. Uh, what a twit. I think, think back, well, what a fool I was. Uh, I was unnecessary extra little wax because I was a bit of a smart aleck. And, and I had to learn humility and, and I, I, I learned it, I think. Um, still got a way to go. I and mean, obviously we're all learning and growing, but... Um, when you look back, you see that, that actually did something. And when you're going through some things in life, if you submit yourself to God and say, Lord, all right, if this is the, the devil, I've prayed and I've come against it, if it's the work of the enemy, but Lord, if you're allowing this for a reason, if I'm still got this situation, Lord, okay, Lord, well then, Lord, what, what do you want to do in my heart? Lord, what is it? Is there something that you need to knock off? Is there an attitude, Lord, within my life? Is this something that you need to deal with? Because you want me to live a holy life, Lord. Is there some areas of character flaw that, that have not been dealt with? And sometimes we say, God, you don't love me. You're not answering me. And he says, no, I love you. And because I love you, that's why this is taking a little bit longer because I'm actually working in you in the situation. And we always want the situation to go. But he says, hang on, I'm actually working through this, endure hardship as discipline. And there's a purpose. Later on, it produces the harvest of righteousness. So what should our attitude be like in discipline? And we had a, there was a men's breakfast at the Diggers Rest Campus uh, yesterday morning. Yesterday was Saturday, yeah. Um, and it was brilliant, actually, for you guys who missed it. It was an awesome men's breakfast. And they had a guy speaking there who had um, just, well, he shared his, his testimony. I won't share it all, but... Uh, he was driving, used to own the, um, the um, what do you call it, the, where they sell plants and everything, the nursery just up, just up in Sydenham Road up there. Anyway, his brother, who was his partner, who was driving with them, they went out, had, went out for lunch, had a lot to drink, too much to drink. He was driving, drove across the traffic and killed his brother, got T-boned and his brother died in it. And, um, and as a result of that, because he was drunk, um, he not only killed his brother, he also went to jail. Because of that, he was jailed for uh, vehicular, vehicular manslaughter. So, but he, he wrote this book. So he was sharing his testimony. And he's written this, one, this book. It's called Finding Myself Inside. That's the title. And then the subtitle, When a Prison Sentence Becomes God's Gift of Love. To a, becomes God's lift of love. Finding myself inside when a prison sentence becomes God's gift of love. Now, just how many think? How many of you would would do that? Think well, when a prison sentence becomes God's gift of love. And at the time when he was going to jail, he didn't expect to go to jail. His testimony he was sharing with us is that, in fact, you know, his, his lawyer thought he may well and said, "Look, just wear old clothes." I think, no, I'm not going to go to jail. He wore his very expensive suit. Um, he loved his special shiny shoes and whatever he said, all this stuff. Didn't expect him, he thought he was going to get off here. This impeccable character witnesses, impeccable. Did all this stuff for the community, did all of that. But just in that reckless moment where he just drank, and, and he obviously doesn't drink anymore, but he killed his, his, his brother, but also had to go to jail. But he didn't expect he was going to go to jail. He thought he was going to get off, quite very confident actually. And then when the judge came down and wham, he went to jail. So, uh, minimum of 10 months. It was going to be 15. They brought it down to 10 and then like a couple of years prison sentence for that. And yet 
God, when he looked back and he saw that, actually God used him and people ended up getting saved in prison. He came back to the Lord and a whole lot of wonderful things happens in this testimony. The bottom line is he wrote this book, When a Prison Sentence Becomes God's Gift of Love. And some of you might be going through something now. You think, well, I feel like I'm in a prison sentence right now. And you're struggling with that. But maybe, maybe, maybe in the struggle, because God loves you. He will never leave us or forsake us. He will never leave you. So he's not abandoned you in the midst of your struggle, whatever your struggle may be. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's always there, always loving. And so in the midst of this, when I'm not abandoned, and yet I'm struggling. I'm not abandoned, yet it's hard. I'm not abandoned and it's painful. Maybe in the midst of that, say, Lord, hang on, maybe, Lord, what are you doing in my heart? What are you doing, Lord? What are you doing in me? And pause and take that moment because he's a good father. And maybe the situation is continuing because there's some things that God is working with in our own heart and our own life. We don't want to miss that. When a prison sentence becomes God's gift of love, and about to write that, in reflection, when he looked back, he said, Lord, what you did in my life, because, well, he found the Lord again and all the wonderful things that changed in his life. And he was, his wife was, uh, when he went to prison, his wife was pregnant, never saw his child born and all those sort of things. But, but when he looked back, he saw that was God's gift for him. And God's gift for you is some of the hardships that you're going through. You can say, Lord, this is a nightmare. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. But later on, you look back and say, God, now I understand why you didn't just snap that away because there's something in me you were forming. And because God loves us so much, he wants you not to have ill-formed character. He doesn't want us to have ill-formed character. He wants us to grow and, and be closer to him and walk closer to him. And sometimes he will allow things within our life. And so what's our attitude? Proverbs 3, 11, 13, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. And do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. He delights in us. Blessed are those who find wisdom and those who find gain understanding. So in the midst of all of those things, if we look and realise, hang on, yes, there's some lessons I had to learn through that. It wasn't pleasant. In fact, it was painful. But Lord, it you allowed, allowed me to go through that. He might not have caused that, but he allowed me to go through that, that I might learn something. Because sometimes God will just let us have the consequence of our decision. He just, because he wants us to learn a lesson. And I've learned things from like that, where God is just, okay, you've done, bang, that's the consequence. And then I've learned, I'm never going to do that again. We, sometimes we learn that way. Sometimes as we look back and, and God will work some things in us, but our attitude, it needs to be one of humility. Lord, I don't understand this. I don't like this. And I'm not saying accept everything that comes your way because if the enemy's having a crack at you, I would stand against it and I would pray. And even as Paul said, he had the fawn in the, f- in the flesh and he prayed and prayed that three times, asked him to take away. And the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. And so I'd still pray, Lord, I don't like this. It's painful. But if it doesn't change and I have to endure it, then I'll be straight away saying, Lord, okay, what is it you're doing in me? What is it, Lord? Because I'm your student and you want to teach me something and I want to be a good student. I want to be a good disciple. When you become a, come to Jesus Christ, you become his disciple, which means you become disciplined, which means he's going to teach us, Lord, what am I? Don't miss the lesson. What a waste of time. If you, if you, don't, if you go through a heartache and, you, and when we miss the lesson, God disciplines us. And so we have to have a heart of humility, humility, surrender, say, Lord, I surrender to you. But sometimes repentance, as we look back and say, yeah, look, I've been stubborn. And uh, I wouldn't dare answer back to God, but I would answer back to my parents. And I've got in trouble for it and I deserve to get in trouble for it. But we look back and say, Lord, what does you want to do within me? God's a good father. He will allow not to punish us. He's not, he's not a vindictive God. He's a God who loves us. And the scripture says fear has to do with punishment. We, don't, we fear God out of reverence and awe, not because we're worried about he's going to punish us. He loves us, but we want to learn the lesson. He's a father, disciplines. But also human fathers that are here, I want to talk to you about discipline just briefly, just before I close. Because um, there are two, a lot of ways that some fathers will 
discipline their kids. There's the father that does nothing, the do-nothing father, who just sits there, the kids are doing whatever, and expects the mother to do that. Well, that's simply wrong. It's not fair. You're a partnership together. You, you're equally responsible for discipline. But some fathers do nothing. Some fathers do nothing up to the point where they can't take it anymore, and then they get angry, and then they react in anger, which is not helpful to to help children in their growth and their development. In fact, I just want to read this. It says, Stud research and studies, this is from an article, and parents themselves report that hard to manage children, and some kids can be hard to manage, are more compliant and agreeable with their fathers more than their mothers. Also, when the father is present in the room or nearby, children are much more compliant with their mothers. Research also indicates that when problems spiral out of control, sometimes fathers step in with harsh, direct punishment to get the situation back under control, which unfortunately can precipitate a cycle of punishment and misbehaviour. So the human father that just lets things get out of control and says, right, that's enough, you're, you're training your children to misbehave in perpetuity. So that's not how to be a good father, a good human father. Uh, and so we don't want to discipline like that. And so we want to be ones that are, you know, are loving with our discipline, with our kids. And I'm far from a perfect father. There's things I regret where I know that I discipline the kids in anger. And I really, even to this day, feel bad where I've got angry and lost my temper at the kids because they were being naughty. Um, and I'm sure every father here can relate to that. If we're honest, we probably all did that. We don't want to be like that. But always with the children, as much as I could once, God taught me how to be a better father as well, is to say to the kids, okay, well, what did you do wrong? What was wrong? Okay, yeah, daddy, I did this, this and this. Okay, well, what, what's the punishment when you do that? Well, what, what happens when you do that? Well, oh, this is what happens, daddy. Well, we're going to have to do that. And then they do that, the lesson learnt. They know what was wrong, they know there was a consequence, and so they learnt in that way. And so that's always important to do that. Proverbs 13, 24, one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. So fathers, particularly, but also mothers, you can't let your kids go run right. If you love your children, you will discipline them, even as the father does. Proverbs 19, 18, and this is a strong one. Discipline your children, for in there there is hope. Do not be a willing party to, the, to their death. Wow. And you think about it really with what happens with things sparring out with drugs and all sorts of things and the things that people get into, drinking, driving and all of those things. It says, discipline them. Don't be a willing party to their death. So that's, we need to do that. We need to be good parents that discipline our children. A loving, firm discipline, uh, reasonable and proportionate. But if we, we don't want to have our kids with drug overdoses. We don't want to have our kids in an accident or we don't want our kids driving and they wipe out six of their best friends and they live and then they have to live with that for the rest of their lives. We teach our children really, really important. But in doing that, Ephesians 6 says, fathers don't exacerbate your children. In other words, don't get them all riled up because you're angry. Fathers do not exacerbate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And remember, that's what discipline is. It's about training and it's about instruction. We, we want to say, if you want to be a better father or a better grandfather or even just a spiritual father, if you're not a human father, but always remember it's about teaching. It's not about punishment. God doesn't want to punish us. God wants us to learn some lessons. And so he will allow some things that we might look into our own life and reflect that off the word of God or just in prayer. Lord, convict me, Holy Spirit. What is it that you want to work through in this life. And so don't be very quick to brush off things and think, well, Lord, you know, you've obviously abandoned me. You said you wouldn't, but you have. No, he hasn't abandoned you. He's with you right in the middle of that. He's there. Uh, but maybe there's some things that we, we need to learn. He's a good, good father. And so I just want to pray for us. Let's just stand at our feet. Some of you may be going through some things at the moment. And uh, you maybe think, well, God, you know, you're punishing me. Can I reassure you God's not punishing you? But if there's a situation or circumstances that's been allowed to continue, then say, well, Lord, this is not pleasant. In fact, it's painful, but Lord, 
what is it that you want me to look back on and see, well, God, you formed this within my life and I'm a better man or I'm a better woman because of what you did in my life, Lord, because of what I've been through, Lord. You didn't leave me, you didn't forsake me, but Lord, you made me more holy, you made me more like you, Lord. You did a work in my life. And so, Father, I just pray, Lord, for first of all, for all those that may be struggling here today. And Lord, maybe you felt, Lord, that they've been abandoned, Lord, or maybe you felt that they've been punished. Lord, let them know that you're a good father, Lord, who will not be punishing them, Lord, and is not abandoning them, Lord, but just loves them so much. And Father, where there's situations that seem to just continue, Lord, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, as they reflect, that they will see the lesson, Lord, that, you, that they're, they're being learning through this, Lord. What is the work that you want to do within their heart and within our lives, Lord? Lord, I pray for that, Lord, for those that may be struggling this day. And Father, I pray, Lord, for all of us, Lord, that we'll always have the attitude, Lord, of submitting to you and saying, Lord, have your way in our life, Lord, and meaning that, Lord, that we will be the men and women that you have made us to be, Father. And Lord, for the human fathers and human grandfathers, Lord, help us, Lord, that we will always, Lord, just have a loving response, Lord, that we will never deal in anger. Father, because you don't deal with us in anger, Lord, help us to be that a good father or a good grandfather, Lord, with our children. Lord, bless the fathers, Lord, the younger the older ones. And uh, Lord, help all of us to be more and more like Jesus, Lord. But we thank you, Father, that you are our wonderful, perfect Father. And Lord, that we trust in you totally, Lord, because you love us, Lord, and you never leave us or abandon us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need some prayer, be happy to pray with you. Mary and I are happy to pray with you over here. Uh, have a great day with your Father. Uh, fathers, if you if fathers passed along, have a great day with your Heavenly Father. If you're estranged from your Father, then pray for your Father. But maybe get on the phone and just see whether you can begin to build that bridge again. But bless you. Have a great day.